Good morning, everyone. You guys want to stand to your feet this morning? We're getting ready for a time of praise and worship. I'm so glad that you decided to join us this morning. Our heart and prayer is that we would have a time together as a body of believers, just spending time with the Lord, worshiping, thanking Him for all that He's been doing. But before we move on, let's open up with a word of prayer. Lord, we just thank you, Father. Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for bringing us to life this morning, God. Lord, I pray that in these next few moments as we dedicate our hearts to you, God. Father, may this be a time of praise and worship that is pleasing to you, Lord. God, this service is all about you and it's all for you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you once again. Have your way in this place this morning. We pray all this in your precious name. And everybody said, Amen.
tongue will confess that you are Lord of Lords, Jesus. Father, we're so grateful that we get to call you our King, Lord. That one day we get to see your return happen, Father. And we get to stand before you face to face, giving you all the praise and all the glory. Can we just give him some praise right now? Lord, we worship you, Father. We worship you, Jesus. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. We love you, Jesus.
forever stand with you, Jesus. Lord, we stand proudly by your side, God. Declaring your name to a world that needs to know who you are. Father, may we never be ashamed of who you are, God. But Lord, we'll stand boldly with you, God. Declaring your name to a world that needs you, Jesus. You are our cornerstone, Father. You are our all in all. You are everything we need, Jesus, and you are far more than enough. So God, we claim to you, we hold to you, Jesus. Go kind of tired today, weary, but God guarantees us one thing, and it's His faithfulness. We may not feel His presence all the time, and He doesn't give us that, He doesn't promise that we'll feel Him all the time, but He does promise goodness that He'll be there no matter what, that He'll be the cornerstone of everything. That no matter what you're going through, where you're at, the Lord has never forsaken or abandoned you. So today we trust in that, we lean into that, and in return, we give our faithfulness back to Him. It's about endurance, being with Him in the long run, not just for a short time but during worship. So I just dive into that.
congregation that's outside of these walls that need to hear your testimony, that needs to hear what God's done for you so that you can go out and be a disciple and change the world. Amen? How awesome is our God? Father, we thank you, Jesus, for who you are. We thank you that you are our cornerstone and we can run to you, God, that we're not walking this road alone, but we're walking it with you this morning. So, God, we give you everything this morning. We give you this service. We give you every plan, even after today, God. We give it to you. We give you our lives, Jesus, because our life, belongs to you and all of God's people here said a shout of amen amen he is awesome he is good and he is fighting for you and I I welcome all of you here today and we welcome all those that are watching us online we're so glad that you are here in the house of the Lord and I tell you what there is no better place to be than in God's house right because when we come together with God's body, we get strengthened. We come in weak and we come in broken. But as we go out for the good message and having to be in communion with God and fellowship with one another, we can never go wrong. Amen? Amen. So with that being said, every month we do have a scripture that we've been reciting together as a church. And so for those of you who didn't receive a bookmark, don't forget to grab one because every month we give you a bookmark with um, the month scripture on here and it's basically for us to remember and to hide in our hearts because how many of you know that the days that we're living in we need God's word hidden in our hearts right and so this is just one way of us um, in putting that into our hearts and into our minds and we're going to say it together and so if you um, can join with me the scripture is going to be in the back of me and we can all say it together this is found in Romans 8 11 and it says the spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in and just as God raised Christ from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same spirit living within you. Amen. We just came back from uh, Easter last week, right? And we saw that God is risen. He's no longer in the tomb. He is up in glory with his heavenly father. Amen. That's right. And that same spirit that, that, that happened there it lives within you and I this morning. Therefore, we have life. We have life. We are not dead. We are living and God imparts his spirit inside all of us. So let's praise God for this scripture today. Father, we thank you for your word, God. We thank you for your promises, God. We hide them in our hearts, Lord. So Father, I pray that you would embed it into our minds, into our spirit, God, that when we forget, God, that we would begin to remember these, these scriptures, God, that will help raise us up, God, and put our feet on a solid rock on salvation and foundation, Lord, we thank you. You, God, that you are our solid rock. We thank you. You are our cornerstone, God. So, Father, we pray that you would have your way again in this service. You're already doing it, and we give you the glory in all of God's people said. Amen. At this time, you can go ahead and turn to your neighbors and give them a aloha, a high five, and tell them that you're happy that they made it to the house of God. We're welcome that you're uh, here also online, and you can turn your eyes to the screen. We have video announcements for you. Aloha and welcome to Connect Point Church. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Whether you are here in our Sunday service or joining us online, we want to say thank you for connecting with us today. If you want to know more about who we are and you're interested in becoming part of our family, then we invite you to take the next step for our Connect Track happening right here on the last two Sundays of the month following our third service. For the month of April, our Connect kids have been given a challenge to raise money for BGMC, Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge called Lost Coins for Lost Souls. It is to help missionaries bring the gospel to children and their families across this world. We would like to extend the challenge to you. Right outside the sanctuary, there's a table set up with some banks. You can take one and fill them up and bring them back on Sunday, May 2nd. Let's help the missionaries reach the children one coin at a time. Are you interested in furthering your education without the cost and distance of going to school in the mainland? Impact Leadership Institute, in partnership with Northwest University, is a fully accredited online academic program that is an excellent option for those who are interested in getting a biblical education in fields such as ministry, leadership, business, and psychology. 
Students can enroll in online classes with Northwest University where you will also have the opportunity to intern and serve within your local church. Students can already apply for the upcoming fall semester. For more information, please contact us at impact at connectpointchurch.com. If you are a guest with us, don't feel obligated to give whatsoever. We are just glad that you are here. If you came prepared to give, here are a few ways to do so. One, you can download our church app to our website at connectpointchurch.com. Three, text GIVE to 808-400-6590. Or you can mail your givings to 168 Fulham Moore Street or in our drop box here at the church. Let's pray for our offering. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that everyone who is here, Lord God, that is ready to give to your storehouse. I pray, Father, that you would bless their givings, bless their hands, bless their homes, their family, and whatever they're in need of, Lord, I pray that you would bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you'd like to stay connected with us, please download our church app, follow us on Facebook or Instagram for our weekly updates. All right, well, good morning, everyone. We're just so glad that the church uh, continues to grow. This July 19 makes six years since we've been back. We started with 40 people, and the church continues to grow every single week. And uh, we just praise and thank God. We truly believe as we keep lifting Jesus up, he's the one who keeps drawing people. And with that great task, uh, we have to continue to increase the team. So at this time, we wanted to... Um, uh, announce um, a special announcement that we're bringing on Pastor Ian full time onto staff. So let's give it up to for Pastor Ian, and we'll have Stacy come up also. So Pastor Ian uh, grew up here in this church and uh, went away to Bible College. I was always been serving really on the worship team. He went to Bible College for uh, worship. That's what he went there. That's where he met his bride, Stacy. Come on up, and uh, Alicia, why don't you join us up here? Let's get this. So uh, this is where they met. They met in Bible college. We're going to have two of our board members come up, Larry and Nola, to give them just a lay, just to welcome them and to say that we're glad that they're a part of this team. They've always uh, been a part for the last several years, but just kind of making it official now, uh, full-time staff. So they met each other at school. This is little Jack's. And they got another baby girl on the way. Amen. So keep them in prayer. Uh, in fact, I think we have about seven babies total in the um, maybe like a two-month span that are being born here at the church. So the nursery will be exploding. But uh, we're just so glad to have both of you here. Uh, thank you, Pastor Ian, for saying yes. And uh, it's not just uh, the husband. You know, it's also the wife, too. It's a duo, and we're grateful. And we know that there's no better person for Ian, then Stacy, she keeps him sharp and on his toes. So, um, so he's he's coming on as our worship pastor, but also our audio and our kind of our tech director. So, if you got any issues with light or sounds, go see him. Okay, <laughs> we want you to extend your hands this year. We're gonna pray over them. We, this is a calling, and as God continues to expand this team, we want to pray that God continues to bless uh, and lead us. Lord, we thank you for. Uh, Pastor Ian, Lord, saying yes and coming on staff full time, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for his family, for Stacy, for Jax, for the little baby girl on the way, Lord. We pray, Lord, your abundant blessing over them, Lord. Continue to use them, anoint them. We pray, Lord, we're grateful and we welcome them a part of our family, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Make sure you congratulate them, give them a hand as they make their way down. Praise God. Oh, you got a picture? You need a picture? Yeah, we got a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Sure. Thank you. She's quick. Praise God. So we're coming out of Easter Sunday. Today we are kicking off our new series. <clears throat> so for the next four weeks, we're going to be in a series about Jesus and the parables uh, if you have not downloaded our Connect Point app, definitely encourage you to do that. Download the app, click on Sermon Notes so you can follow along there. Yeah. How many of you, there we go, I want to ask you a, a, a question. How many of you growing up knew you always wanted to get married, guy or girl? Who was that? 
Come on, let's see those hands. Don't be shamed. Don't be shy. Guys, you can raise your hands too, okay, because I was 12 when I knew, like, I'm getting married, okay. All right, let's see those hands. One more time. One, two, three. Hands in the air. How many of you knew? Okay, okay. How many hands down? How many of you are like, uh, marriage, I don't think so. Not for me. Not looking forward to it. Let me see those hands. Who are they? Where are they? Okay, okay. We always have a few. That's Okay. You know, I want you to turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. Matthew 25, 1 to 13. We're going to be talking about a wedding and a bride here today. And whether you wanted to get married or not, there is a wedding that's coming. So Matthew 25, starting with verse uh, verse 1, chapter 25. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps. And went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five of them were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps. And the other five were wise enough to take long extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were roused by the shout, look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up, prepared their lamps, for the bridegroom was coming. The five foolish ones asked the others, please give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. But the others replied, we don't have enough for all of us. Go and shop and buy some for yourselves. Verse 10. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and then the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, believe me, I don't know you, so you too must keep watch. For you do not know the day or the hour of my return title of my message today is, Is the Bride Ready? Is the Bride Ready? What we have here a, this is Laisha's bridal dress, actually. Got permission to say, can I open your box? She's like, what? I was like, don't worry, it's for a sermon illustration. She's like, all right, fine, but uh, this is a bridal dress. Is the Bride Ready? I've done numerous of weddings over the years, and it seems like it's the common theme. And the one question that everybody asks at almost every wedding is they're checking on the bride and asking the bride, are you ready? And at time, how many of you ever been to a wedding where the bride was late before? Right? right. And they're waiting. I, I don't think I've been to a wedding yet, officiate a wedding where we're waiting on the groom. The groom is usually there and on time, but it's usually the bride the bride is not yet ready there is a great wedding that's taking place and jesus is our great groom or bridegroom he's returning for his bride the church and i pray that we wouldn't be found sleeping but we would be ready when the bridegroom comes amen here we see jesus sharing one of his Over 40 parables that he spoke about during his earthly ministry. So what is a parable? I love what one pastor said. A parable is an ingeniously simple word picture illuminating a profound spiritual lesson. A parable is an ingeniously simple word picture illuminating our eyes being open sometimes spiritually when our eyes are open it's this illumination that happens a profound spiritual principle all of jesus's parables were related to salvation or somehow the gospel when you look at all those 40 they were connected back to the gospel so what is the gospel the gospel is about jesus's death his burial and his resurrection and that he's coming back again We can't remain at the cross and his resurrection. He's around here on earth and he goes to heaven. And I want you to know, if you didn't know, that Jesus is coming back for his church. Amen. (laughs) He's coming back. 
in the last 2,000 years since Christ promised to return, there have been moments when the church has gone to sleep. We've gone to sleep, sleeping spiritually, watching idly, moving aimlessly. Meanwhile, the world around us continues to decay and deteriorate because of sin and selfishness and unrighteousness and I think it's about time that the church of God straighten up from their sleepy slumber get dressed and get ready for work it's a season for harvest I said it's a season for harvest I don't know if you believe it or not the harvest is ripe the laborers are few it's a season for harvest I believe it's time for the church to wake up to get up and the bride to make herself ready and with open eyes be preparing herself for the bridegroom's return today we're going to look at a parable jesus gave about the 10 bridesmaids who were waiting on the bridegroom we'll learn what attitudes we should have and consider if we ourselves are christians we call ourselves christians what are we doing to get ready for this great day? Is the bride ready? I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell them, are you ready? The first thing we see in this story is an utter preparation. There's this utter preparation. How many of you have... Uh, ever been a part of a wedding it was your wedding and uh, it took time to prepare right you prepare financially prepare for the food if you cooking it yourself preparing favors prepare you name it I didn't realize how much things you had to prepare until it sometimes comes to yourself going through it we grew up in a church where we were always helping each other uh, getting married and everybody was helping so whether we had to go pick opihi or go catch fish and at times it was a, a year-long process just preparing for a wedding here in this passage of scripture Jesus compares these five wise bridesmaids who were prepped and ready and five bridesmaids who were foolish and unprepared in truth when we study this imagery that's here in this parable it reflects a typical first century Palestinian wedding and this is what Jesus oftentimes when he's talking about parables he's not just drawing a spiritual principle he's at times speaking of currently what's happening in the culture that they could take word pictures and commonly put it and try to attach it if they could see and their eyes were being illuminated this was a first century Palestinian wedding a welcoming processional escorts the newly married couple from the bride's home over to the banquet of the bridegroom home at there that bridegroom's home there were legal nuptials that had been exchanged and while they were there in the celebration or maybe the festival is taking place there's an extended period of time that passes while in the bridegroom's home then torches are lit the way in darkness so that the bridegroom usually the bridesmaids would light their oil maybe late at night when they're leaving that place so that they could see in the middle of darkness they would have to light their lamps so Jesus isn't just throwing any word picture out there this is a commonly understood story or thing that was happening in the culture and he's telling them are you going to be wise that when the night is done and you're done partying that you got enough light to get back and that you're not walking in darkness are you like the wise or the foolish bridesmaids can I encourage you not to be foolish and unprepared for Jesus's return because he is returning first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 to 18 says for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God and first the believers who have died will rise from their graves then together with them we who are still alive and remain on earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. Somebody say forever. Forever. So encourage each other with these words. Encourage each other with these words. This last week, 
Lation Highway. How many of you ever uh, go and visit, uh, visit loved ones at the grave occasionally? Uh, we haven't gone in a, a long time. We went to go, I think we went to six or seven different people who had passed away in our family. We went go. At first, we went there to just go take flowers. Ended up, we were there for hours cleaning graves and pulling weeds. And, um, and I couldn't help but think while I was studying this passage, we were there at this uh, uh, these graveyards of those in our family who had gone home to be with the Lord and who are waiting for their return, right, that they will see him. And they are waiting. And what he's talking about here in Thessalonians, that when that great call and command shouts, those dead will begin to raise. But we ourselves who are ready will be there also. For those who are prepared and ready for his return, Jesus or for those who aren't ready and prepared for his return, Jesus uses this Greek word in this uh, parable, moros, which means, you stupid fool. I was like, I just love Jesus. He just cuts to the chase, doesn't mince his words. He's like, you're not prepared for this great wedding day, you stupid fool. You're not ready for this time. You had time to prepare, you stupid fool. Jesus is saying, you stupid fool, if you aren't prepared and ready. So what does a fool look like? What does a fool look like? I can't help but this verse came to mind. Proverbs chapter 26 verse 11 says this, as a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats their folly. How many of you ever seen your dog eat their vomit before? We had we had a multi shih tzu and she would throw up on the carpet and just like it was a meal, just eat it right up again. And he said it was so disgusting, right? That a dog would return to its vomit. But even so, I love the proverb says that even so, a fool repeats their folly. Meaning that you and I, when we are exposed to the truth and exposed to the light, that we have this opportunity to turn from our foolish and evil and wicked ways. But if we go back to our foolish ways after we've been enlightened and we see the light, it's like we are a dog returning to our vomit. How many of you want to, how many of you ever tasted your own vomit? Oh, that's another story. Oh, I just feel nauseous now. <laughs> and yet at the same time, how true is that in life that we are caught up doing foolish things in this world. And like that writer of Proverbs says, we just keep returning to the vomit. Can I encourage you if you're walking foolishly and aimlessly and caught up doing things in this life that really aren't important, I want to encourage you to don't go back and eat your vomit. Would you turn from it? I mean, how foolish is that? Would you be wise and turn to God? Turn towards him. Fools do not learn from the lessons of their mistakes. Fools don't learn. How many of you ever heard that phrase, right? We're going around the mountain Again, how many of you heard that before? I grew up, and my mom used to always tell me that. He's like, you know, son, boy, I feel like you've been here before. Haven't we been here before? I feel like this thing is familiar, she would say. I feel like we're going around the same old mountain over and over. How many of you can relate to that? You've been around this mountain several times. I'll never forget growing up, my mom would often tell me, she says, you need to read the book of Proverbs because you're doing just some dumb and foolish things. And in truth, that's what Proverbs was written to. It was written to young men who were preparing to get married that they would be wise. That's why it culminates in Proverbs 31 on what kind of wise woman to look for that wise men should study the book of Proverbs that they too would be wise and not foolish. I pray that you and I would not be walking through this life foolishly and aimlessly, but know that we have a call on our life, a gift in our life, and a purpose to our life. God is longing for you and I to be prepared for his great return. What is it in your life that you need to prep and get ready for his return? 
I don't, you don't need to tell me here now between you and God and the Holy Spirit and your, in your own heart, whatever that conversation needs to take place, you know what it is that you need to get rid of. What is the vomit that you keep returning to? Whew. How many of you, your stomach is queasy right now? What is the vomit that you keep returning to that the Holy Spirit wants you to turn away from? Can I encourage you to be wise? Be a wise bridesmaid waiting for his return. John 14, 3 says this, If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. If all you have to look forward in this life is this life, it's kind of an empty hope. I don't know about you, but there is an eternity that you and I will spend, and it will be either in heaven or in hell. And if, our, if heaven is our goal, I want you to know that he is coming and returning back for you and I. He's gone to prepare a place and wants us to prepare for that place. I love what Pastor David Jeremiah says. He says, there is a sense in which the Christian's life on earth is a dress rehearsal for heaven. How many of you know that, right? At a wedding, there is a dress rehearsal the night before. And everybody comes, you know, dressed and know all their parts. And I love what David Jeremiah is saying here. He says, it's almost as if here on earth, this is like just a dress rehearsal for the great wedding that's about to take place. Then he goes on to say, not in terms of costumes or theatrics, but in terms of worship and devotion to the one we will worship for all of eternity. This isn't a dress rehearsal where we put on makeup and put on theatrics and drama and make pretend here on earth. We are literally preparing to worship the one for all of eternity. The Lamb of God who sits on the throne of heaven. Can I encourage you that if you're not into worship, maybe you won't be into it when you get to heaven. You won't be ready if you're kind of like, worship, meh, praise, meh, not for me. Maybe you won't be ready for heaven when all we're going to be doing is praising and worshiping God day and night. Crying holy, singing praises, singing glory to you. You are wonderful and good, oh God, and merciful, and we worship you. And, and this is a dress rehearsal here on earth as we sing in praise, because for all of eternity, we'll be worshiping him. How many of you are still ready to go to heaven? Or how many of you need some preparation in our hearts? Imagine that here we are, we just sing maybe 20, 20, 20 minutes of worship. If you get tired singing 20 minutes of praise and worship, how will you be when you got to sing and pray and worship him for all of eternity? Woo, I don't think we're ready. We're going to be like uh, uh, our, our little one, give him about five minutes without doing anything. And he's like, I am B-O-R-E-D, Bored. And if we're not prepared with hearts that are preparing for that great wedding day, you'll be severely disappointed. Well, I don't think so because when you get there, you're going to be in such awe. But I don't know if you're going to be prepared to worship him like that. You also need to know that preparation is key, but also spiritual preparedness is not transferable. Spiritual preparedness is not transferable. What do, what do I mean? I don't know about you. We're on this health journey also. And if there was a way I could transfer by paying someone else to work out for me and then transfer all those muscles onto me and the fat onto them, man, wouldn't that be amazing? How many of you would sign up for that? If you could transfer, I could eat the pie, eat the ice cream, you eat the veggies and eat clean. And then there's this transfer that takes place. Wouldn't that be amazing? We want, the, we want to have that healthy body but don't want to prepare or be consistent and persistent in what it requires for that. And what's happening here is preparation is key but it's not something that you can delegate or transfer to somebody else. 
the five with no oil ask the others for some oil. And you would think, as I read this story, I say, you would think that when the five goes to the other five and says, hey, we don't have oil, can't you lend us some oil? And in my mind, I think the Christian thing to do was, hey, I'll give you some of my oil. Right? Wouldn't you think that? Wouldn't that be the common Christian thing to do? And yet this is a parable. Remember this the word picture, a spiritual analogy. And yet Jesus, he says there was a time and place for sharing. But we are past that point. There was a time and place where if you needed help and you needed prayer and you needed something, hey, I'd be happy to pour into you. But on that day when our time comes, man, you're going to stand by yourself. That you can't get into heaven on my oil. You can't get there, on, you're going to get there on your own. And it's interesting here because it, uh, when I look at it and I see earlier parables of what Jesus is talking about, that in truth, it, it, it doesn't happen where they're giving it out and you would think it would be equal where, okay, five, five uh, uh, virgins or bridesmaids need oil. And, and, and I think Jesus gives a parable earlier that kind of paints this picture. And he says here that in this earlier parable that the early workers and the late workers in the vineyard all got paid the same. And I remember this parable, right, like, Early in the morning, how many of you know that parable, right? Early in the morning, you wake up, or how many of you are early risers? You're like, crack of dawn up, right? How many of you are like, the sun has to wake you up, or the roosters, or whatever it is? And this, this story has always, I think, frustrated me from a worldly perspective who that mindset of you got to, everything you get, you got to work for. And early in the morning, the people rise up in this parable that Jesus tells earlier. They wake up and they go into the town square and they would hire workers. And early in the morning, they would take them to the field and they would work. And the, the master would come back to the town square and gather up more people midday and take them back into the field. And then late in the afternoon, the, the master goes back and get, hey, I need more workers in the field. And he goes back to the field and they go back working again. And at the end of the day, the master goes there. And he's paying up wages and the people are realizing the people who came early in the morning and the people who got, came late in the afternoon was all kind of paid the same. How many of you know that if you work harder, you kind of deserve more, right? And that is in, in the natural, only natural, but when it comes to the spiritual things, in truth, that's not the goal. The goal is the kingdom and getting everybody. There's a harvest happening. And whether you came 20 years ago or 20 minutes ago, that God treats you and I the same. And there is no preferential treatment for those who've been in the kingdom for a long time that you and I, the, he gives us and it's access to him and his spirit and his power and his favor. And in truth, when we get to heaven, whether you're 20 years or 20 minutes, we all going to get there if we name him Christ. Isn't that cool? And there is this parable earlier that Jesus is willing to delve up evenly and say, you start early, you start let, late, no worry. We all going to go heaven as long as we surrender. But here, Jesus is saying, your time was up. You had the chance. You had the opportunity. You've been given chances over and over and over. Jesus is saying, you know the truth. You've been warned. There's no excuses. The prophets have spoke. The pastors have preached. But you still didn't listen. It's on you. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, it's on you. It's on you. It's on you. And I see this at times with parents who, you know, while you're here, you're loving and pouring in and, and you're giving. And if your children here and you got parents or spiritual parents who are pouring into you, they love you enough to tell you the truth and they're trying to encourage you in the Lord and point you in the right direction and say, get in and get on fire for the Lord. There's more for you. And I want to encourage you if you got a parent here or a grandparent or a spiritual figure here who's pouring into you, praise and thank God. But can I tell you, don't stay there and let it go in one year and out the other. But would you let it sink in your heart because the Holy Spirit is trying to prepare Prepare you for a great wedding feast. Don't discount that you got people who love you enough to tell you the truth now. 
I just tell you this, growing up, I, I never used to like listening to my parents. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands here in case your parents are here too. I, I never used to, I say, yeah, you wait. When I get my own kids, I let them do what they like. Do what they like. I know I got to get out of this house. 18 came. I'm like, we bought a property. We built our own house. I am out of this place. But somehow the tables turns when you start getting your own kids, right? It's kind of like, oh, you think you're going to get away with this? Oh, you're ending up in the principal's office every single day. Okay. Well, we're going to have to talk stories when you get home now. And we love them enough to tell them the truth. Can I tell you, if you got somebody who's speaking to the truth to you, thank God that he's sending people to speak truth to you. Can I encourage you to take heed to the truth? They love you enough to tell you, but no one can walk this out for you. You will not get to heaven on their oil. You got to get there on your own oil. I pray that you would fill up on the oil of the Holy Spirit. It's not mom's fault, not dad's fault, not pastor's fault, not sibling's fault. Only you can surrender and say yes to Jesus. No one can do it for you. It's not transferable on that day. Second thing is an unrelenting patience. There is an utter pre preparation for this great wedding in heaven. But there is an unrelenting patience that's required. In all my years of weddings, usually there is this delay, a waiting, right? It's in the preparation. And many people, I often hear couples are like, Pastor, we just want to get this over with. Can we just go to the judge and tie our knot and let's get it done already? And there's something that happens in this wedding and there's this great anticipation, great waiting, this unrelenting patience that's taking place. The word delayed in the passage of scripture here is this Greek word, kron Chronizontos or chronos, where we get the word for time, this Greek word, it means to have a long time coming. In other words, when Jesus is giving this parable and this passage of scripture, I don't know about you, but I've heard it all my life growing up in church that Jesus is coming back. I've heard it all in my life, Jesus is coming back, and it's not that we should say, well, he ain't coming back, so let's stop talking about it. No, we are, should still anticipate his return. We should continue talking about his great return that's coming. It's to extend beyond an expected time. In other words, you and I may get to a point in our life and our walk with the Lord where we say, Jesus, I don't know if you're coming back. I heard this all my life. But that word delay means to extend beyond the expected time. Meaning you and I may have an expected time that he should show up in our life. And ain't this true in life? Sometimes you feel like, Jesus, I don't know about you, I seem like he's never early, right? You're always like, oftentimes he seems late. But in truth, he's always on time. And what seems like a delay, it's just an extending beyond the expected time. They were not expecting for the bridegroom to come home. They fell asleep. And at midnight, midnight when they least expect him to show up, he shows up. And isn't it true that in this walk with the Lord that we have to have this unrelenting patience to wait on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. The master of the house, Jesus talks about in another parable. He says that if you knew that the master of the house, that there was a robber who was going to come into the house and steal from that house. And I shared this in another message that if you as a, say, husband or men in the house, if you knew tonight that wherever you live at your address, there was a robber and a thief coming in. And he was coming to steal, harm, possibly kill you and your family. How many of you would stay up and you'd be ready, right? I, I said that before, I have, uh, I love baseball, always have loved baseball. I have Louisville Slugger by the door. And it's not because I continue to play baseball, but I'm anticipating an arrival. Just in case someone decides to come. And I'm not advocating violence, but if you come in this house, I have an obligation and a duty to protect everything that God has entrusted to me. And the, the, the master of the home will wait in anticipation and not go to bed waiting just in case something comes in. And, and, and it's this analogy, this parable that Jesus is giving. Even so, will you and I have an unrelenting patience because the enemy 
comes in sneaking about whom he may devour. I don't know about you, but isn't it true? The enemy just comes in and he attacks at a time when you think not. And we are to wait and have an unrelenting patience. How many of you are good at patiently waiting? Oh, we got some. God bless you. The wedding day is filled with anticipation. Jesus has been gone 2,000 years, but I pray that the, our hearts and our attitudes wouldn't grow weary on waiting for the bridegroom. The groom is coming back. I said the groom is coming back for his bride. Amen. The bride has to wait for that day. God has always been pictured as the husband or the groom to Israel in the Old Testament. Isaiah 54, 5 says, for your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your redeemer. The bridegroom who is returning back for you and I, we are the bride. You and I, whether you are male or female, we are the bride. Now let me be clear here of what Jesus is not saying. God is not confused about gender. And he's not expecting you men. Can you see some of you men putting on this dress right now? And waiting, that would be a, a sight that would probably cause some joy and laughter at your expense, which wouldn't be good. Lord, forgive me. But that's not what God is talking about here. You and I are his bride, but it's a parable. It's a word picture. He's not confused about gender identity. That you and I, there's no confusion here. And that men are women and women are men. God isn't confused and has never changed his mind since back then till now. We are waiting and anticipating his return. Revelation chapter 19 verse 6 to 8 says this. Then I heard again what sounded like a shout of a vast crowd. For the roar of mighty ocean waves and the crash of a loud thunder. Praise the Lord for the Lord our God. The almighty reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice. Let us give honor to him for the time has come. There is a, th this revelation at the end of the book is talking about this, this wedding feast that's going to take place one day. And there is this time that's to come. We got to be unrelenting and patient for that time to happen. For the wedding feast of the lamb and his bride has prepared herself. She has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear. For the fine linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people. I don't have to, time to unpack that ending part, but it's not necessarily talking about just that we'll be in white royal garments. He's saying here that our white fine linen are the good deeds. There's a preparation here on earth. And how we'll be clothed and what we do. That we have to be patiently waiting for that day. I also want to clarify about the waiting time is not idle time. Waiting time is not idle time like you park your car and you're just idling, okay? Being patient and waiting on God is not passive but active. Somebody needs to hear this today. You think you're waiting on God and you think it's just a passive time. I put my car in park, I let it idle, and I coast and I cruise. But actually waiting on God is then active state not a passive state and the next verse is Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 to 30 if you continue reading on in the chapter Jesus comes and he he's giving another parable and he talks about giving talents one he gives five talents another two talents another one talent and in truth if you read the story continue reading that chapter go home and read it then the master goes away for an extended period of time just as he talked about in the previous scripture there's an extended period, meaning that those who got five talents and two talents and one talent says, man, I don't know how long the master going to take, but the, remember, what, remember the story. You know the story. The one with five talents, what did he do? He multiplied it. He doubled it. He got five. The one with two talents, what did he do? Doubled it. One with one talent, what did he do? Buried it. He buried it. And, and a talent, technically a talent was a, a, a divvied up, according to the master, According to the ability of each person. And sometimes we think, oh, that's not fair, Lord. They got, oh, five talents and they, I only got one talent. And the principle in that parable is to be faithful with whatever God's put in your hand. 
Because if you got one talent, two or five, it doesn't matter. As long as you be faithful with that, you will begin to double. A talent represented 20 years wage for a, a laborer. So imagine that even the guy who had one talent, how many of you know that, how many of you would like 20 years wages right now up front in your pocket, in your bank account right now? And when I think one talent, I'm like, ah, he never had much. And, and I lo love this. He, he goes, he tells the master, when the master returns, there's an extended period of time. And the master finally comes and says, hey, what did you do with the one talent? What did you do with the 20 years worth of wages that you had? I buried it. I knew you were a hard man. And here's this principle about patiently waiting. It's not a passive state that you idly coast and put it in park. It's an active place because our faith is active. And we take what we put in our hand and as we be faithful to him and we multiply and the one turns into two. And God says, you've been faithful with two. Now you're ready. I can multiply you with four. And you faithful with four. Now I'm going to give you eight. And you faithful with eight and it's 16. You get the picture? It's not passive but active. I pray that as you're waiting on the Lord, you wouldn't be parked idly in your faith. But that you would be moving actively in your faith. Being about the master's business. Amen. The, is the bride ready? There's an utter preparation. There's an unrelenting patience. But yet at the same time we see in the parable how it ends. It will be unforgettably painful. Un forgettably painful. It was a painful day for the five foolish bridemaids. They run off to the store to refill their lamps with oil. And at that time, the stores would stay open when there was a big celebration like this. The stores would remain open in case that festival or wedding and celebration needed something from the store. So these people were foolish and last minute, and I'm going to ask how many of you are procrastinators? Because that would be my hand too. How many of you are procrastinators? That me, that help me feel better. Oh, okay, we're in this together. All right. We waited last minute and they go run to the store, go fill their lamps. But by the time they got back, the procession was over. They went from the bride's house to the groom's house. All that procession and everybody moving. And by then the groom had shut the door. The door is shut to the groom's home and probably locked to keep out any intruders and there they beg and plead for permission to enter but the bridegroom refuses to let them in for some of us on that great wedding day when the trumpet sounds it will be a joyous occasion for those who are prepped and ready but for those who aren't ready man it's going to be unregrettably it will be painful matthew chapter 7 verse 21 not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only those who do the will of my Father in heaven. Only those who do the will of my Father in heaven. I pray that as we kind of bring in this to a close, that you would have enough oil for you. If you're here today and maybe... You look at your, your jar and you're like, I'm not ready. I want you to know that it's not too late right now. But there will come a day when you got to be ready. And I pray from young to old, because this isn't just for young people. There's people sitting in church for 30 years who are not ready. People who think that just because showing up to church, it's like punching a time clock and I did my good deed but not fully surrendered to the Lord and I think people on that day people be crying and saying Lord I thought I did it Lord I thought I was faithful and I pray whether young or old that we would be prepared for that great day that's coming 1 Corinthians 15 52 it will happen in a moment in the blink of an eye when the last trumpet is blown and it sounds. And all who have died will be raised to live with him forever. Can I encourage you that the gospel isn't just about an insurance policy from going to hell. 
and ensuring that you go to heaven. It's about bringing dead people to life now. Can I, maybe I need to say that again. This message about the bridegroom and is the bride ready for that day isn't an insurance policy so you don't go to hell and that you get to heaven. It's preparation now because he wants to bring the dead now and make them alive. That's what the gospel is about. It's not about behavior modification. God is not interested in modifying your behavior. He's interested in making the dead thing in you come alive. The spirit in you to come alive. The gift in you to come alive. The call in you to come alive. That is the power of the gospel. Not to wait to get to heaven. He wants to see it active in your life today. Amen. Why don't we all stand as we close. Back to my title. Is the bride ready? Are you and I ready for that great day? Only you can answer that for yourself. And I pray that you will be ready. Whatever that looks like, whatever you need to take care of, whatever the vomit it is that you don't or shouldn't be returning to today, can I encourage you not to return to that vomit for only a fool returns back there, but that you will fully surrender yourself to the Lord. There is an utter preparation if we fail to prepare, we will prepare to fail on that day. There's an unrelenting patience. Don't grow weary in doing good. If you're here today faithfully serving the Lord for 20 years, can we give all those who faithfully serve God for all those years a big hand? And they do it without accolades or pats on the back at times. But I so appreciate all of our dream team who serve here. Never on the platform, people not you know, saying their praises to them, but we appreciate you. Whatever you're doing, have a patience that we're doing it unto the Lord. Don't do it for pastor. Do it for the Lord. He sees you. And it will be an unforgettably painful day. And this is why the urgency of the gospel. The urgency of the gospel. We're going to pray and I'll give you the opportunity to receive Christ. Lord, we thank you. Is the bride ready? Lord, only they can answer that question today. Lord, I pray that they would take heed to the truth of your word, Lord. That your word would sink deep in their hearts, Lord. As we've come through Resurrection Sunday, you died, you were buried. But Lord, the gospel doesn't end there. You're coming back. Lord, that's the ending part of the gospel is you're returning for your bride, your church, Lord. Lord, if there's anyone here today, Lord, who's not right and ready, I pray that they would consider, Lord, laying down their weights in sin. If you're here today and maybe your heart isn't right with the Lord, I want to give you that opportunity. Between you and God, no condemnation, no guilt. The Holy Spirit is, I believe, drawing you closer to his heart. If you need to just make right anything in your life, Maybe there is foolish vomit that you're returning to. Maybe you're being impatient, running to other things. Whatever it is, I pray that today that you would recommit your life to the Lord. We're going to pray this prayer. If you're ready, will you pray it to him, meaning it with all your heart. Say, dear Heavenly Father, I surrender my life to you. I give you everything. Take all of me. Wash me clean that I will be ready prepped, prepared for the great wedding day that I will see you face to face. Help me to share the good news with others that they don't walk in darkness, but that they experience the marvelous light. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. We're going to sing this song in closing and give you some next step as we continue to make this transition to help you to grow in your walk with the Lord. Would you lead us in a song? Let's pray. So I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned.
today, whether you're joining us online or whether you're in the service together, we want to help you take your next steps. And what, what does that look like for you? And maybe you're asking that yourself. And obviously, we're here for you as a church. We want to know that we want to walk alongside you, know that you're not alone on this journey. Um, and it starts by that simple beginning to say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Right? Are we ready? Are we ready for his arrival? It, start, it begins, the journey begins there. And if you did say that prayer, we have a resource, a new believer's handbook for you. Um, you can grab that at our Connect Center. We'd love to talk with you. And in that book, we actually have our next step card. Um, so this, this is really kind of what we drive here at Connect Point Church. But we want to really just continue to press and, and let you know that you're not alone. And it starts here with salvation. But maybe you're also ready for water baptism. If you're just going to check off on this card uh, if you decide to follow Jesus. Maybe you're interested in water baptism. That will be your next step. We do water baptism. We try to do one at least once a month. And uh, our, our next water baptism is coming up uh, next month uh, in, in May. So definitely if you're, if you're interested in that, you can check the box on the paper and, and just prepare yourselves for that. Maybe you're interested in taking your next step for the Connect Track. Uh, we have a Connect Track, which is really just in essence why we do what we do here at Connect Point Church. And that happens every last two Sundays of every month. So the last two Sundays of April, we have in our Connect Track, if you want to learn more about who we are as a church, uh, maybe you want to learn about more about who you are and what God has instilled in you and your giftings and, and your passions. And we want to help you discover your gifts and your purpose so that you can be, walk out and fulfill the purpose that God has on your life. So if you're interested in the Connect Track, you can also check off the box on this card. Um, and we'll be in the, the lobby area at the Connect Center. We'd love to talk to you, connect with you, to help you take your next step in journey with the Lord. If you need a Bible, we have a Bible for you, uh, free of charge. There's also Bibles in the, in the Legacy Bible Bookstore if you want a, a different Bible. We offer a New Testament Bible. Um, if you need prayer, uh, there's a prayer team who wants to pray for you. And even at this time, if, we, if the prayer team is here, I invite, invite you guys up to the altars. And uh, there's nothing like having someone pray for you. I say it all the time, but it's, it's just something that's so powerful. Invite people into your life. Let them know where you're at. It, accountability is one of the most powerful things, I believe, in this walk of life. So I'll help, help people keep you accountable, pray with you. So we have a prayer team wants to pray with you. And um, that being said, we're just so glad you could be here, join with us. Uh, we'd love to connect with you at the Connect Center. And a couple other things, um, you know, we, uh, we, we relaunched our website again. I just want to continue to plug that. So be sure to uh, check that out. Make yourselves available to that. And then also, before you walk out of these four walls, hopefully uh, if you need a gift or something for yourself or for a loved one, please check out the Legacy Bible Bookstore. Um, they have some sales going on right now. So uh, make yourselves available to that. Were, were you blessed to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Amen. Well, let, let me just fill us in a word of prayer as we go out of these four walls. Lord God. Thank you for your word today. Lord, I pray that we would truly prepare, God. Lord, our faith cannot be on the backs of somebody else, Lord. It has to be our own faith for ourselves. And I pray that this day we choose to make that commitment with you. I pray that even in the stillness of our hearts, those who said that prayer would uh, continue to just stick it out and follow you through and through, Lord. I pray you'd use us for your glory. And as we walk out of this church, that we would encourage ourselves, encourage people around us to do likewise. We love you. We praise you. Give it the highest praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Go love somebody this week, all right? We'll see ya.
Surrender all I am is yours.